ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ ಅಚ್ಛಾ ದೇಖೋ ಕಿತ್ರ ಪಾಂಡವ ಭವನ ಅಚ್ಛಾ Pandav Bhavan and Om Shanti Bhavan in Pandav Bhavan, Pandav so Bhavan wonderful. Now. Come into Pandav Bhavan, you put your foot in Pandav Bhavan, and what do you feel? What do you feel? How does that make you feel? Baba, sweet, beloved, um, sweet, beloved Baba's place of residence, it's the place where he performed his actions. Shantivan has its own flavor, Gyan's are over its own um, beauty, but here, Madhuban, Pandav Bhavan, is Baba's place of residence, his place of activity. It's the place where Baba had yoga, and so ba- Daddy will take leave from us. and uh, go down to Dadi Kumarka. Dadi Kumarka and Dadi Janki always like to be together. Dadi Kumarka feels Dadi Janki should always be by her side. But Dadi Kumarka loves to see all of us, Baba's children, should feel that I am the light of Baba's eyes. I am the jewel of Baba's eyes. Each one should feel that. for yourself, that I am the jewel, the light of Baba's eyes, and that feels so good to have that self-respect, that importance. What happens when a mother looks at the child, the child feels, this is my mother. Baba is our mother first, then he is our father, because it is with his trishti. that we feel that internal happiness. This is my mother, my sweet mother. In that happiness, there is strength, that power. Now, I don't know if this is loud enough. Uh, Monica, is loud enough? Thank you. Baba ne Dalit ma ki rupi dhrishti di hai. So Baba gives us Drishti as the mother and what I would like to share with you, the Murli that Baba conducted on the 15th of October here in this hall about staying in self-respect and giving respect to others and then Baba took up that theme again in the last of Yet Murli. So Daddy would like to clarify that a bit more. She has been doing that, but today in Om Shanti Bhavan, to bring that to light more, first of all, there has to be the sanskar of being in self-respect. After all, which mother has given us sustenance? The drishti that we have received from Baba, especially, especially for the double foreigners, Baba has great, great love. Because we have grown up with Baba's loving drishti. The language is understood afterwards and it's always dependent on translation. But we understand what Baba is saying through his drishti because there's a great attraction, a pull for Baba's drishti. And that is what makes us detached from the body. And we have that deep feeling that I am a pure, innocent child. I'm a little child. I'm a child of God. Not that I'm a child of this Kaliyug. Children of Kaliyug are far from innocent. The things of the past are filled within the soul of the child. But Baba is giving us that Um, awareness of our original past and he reminds us of who we were originally and he makes us feel that we belong to him, we are his. And so Daddy has been sharing in the classes downstairs. In Bhakti we say, where is it we've come from and where is it we're going to? They don't know that, but Baba has told us where we have come from. and where it is we're going to and how it is we're going to go. We've understood all of this. We've come 
from up above and we have to return back up there and so in this awareness Baba has given us the understanding of the whole cycle the condition the state in which we first came down that pure state and how it is we have to return home we can only return home when we become totally pure so when the soul first came down it was Satopratan, completely pure. And then the soul has to finish all the traits of being Tamopratan, completely impure, and finish the um, stage of being Rajopratan, that middling stage. And Baba gives us love, gives us power in the form of the mother. The love of the mother is so pure. And then Baba has hopes in us to see us um, improve in every way. So a child who stays in self-respect has attention on Baba and has attention that Baba has hopes in us. Baba has that feeling that my child should be obedient, should be faithful, should be honest, should not go into any form of bad company and stays under the sustenance of the mother and father and doesn't have any external desires of outside or attraction to the things of outside because the child is aware now, has understood that from Baba we can attain everything, everything. There's nothing lacking in our lives. We've we can receive everything from Baba. But there is this old sanskar of keeping desires and attraction, attachment to the old things. But for one who has that feeling that I have everything, they are on that stage of self-respect. They feel that I have everything. Some are seen to have everything, yet internally, they still have this feeling that I want this, I desire that. There isn't that state of contentment, basically. But Baba has made us so royal so that we feel that I don't need anything, I don't want anything. They, the children have that much self-respect. The feeling, Baba, I have you. I have you, so I have power. I don't have any kind of fear. Other people in the world have a great deal of fear. But by being in a state of self-respect, Baba is the truth. As Baba said today, in today's Murli, out there, everyone tells lies. It is a world of falsehood. There is only the one who is the truth. Only Baba is the truth. So Baba is truthful in every way, in his actions, in his relationships, in the attainment we receive from him. Nobody can steal that attainment from us. The more we donate what we have, the more that increases within us. The things that I have are imperishable. They can never be destroyed. The things that Baba is giving me, they are imperishable. They are true, real, filled with truth and imperishable. That is, they can never be destroyed. This is why I've seen within the self, throughout my life, that Baba has taught me the sense to be in self-respect and he's taught me very well. He's taught me in such a way that if somebody gives me respect, I become happy or if they don't give me respect, I become upset. No, 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 never. But Baba has filled so much in the self that the soul is content and feels full and complete. That is content that I have everything. A sensible person stays content. 
One who lacks understanding has a nature of being discontent. Actually, it's not a matter of being discontent, but there isn't that natural nature of being content. There needs to be that natural nature of being content as a child of God. But being discontent is an old nature. So yesterday I said to the teachers, which um, impure trait do I have? On the one hand, Baba says there are the virtues, the pure traits, then there are the impure traits, and then there are the deity qualities. So which is the impure trait within us? What would you call being discontent? What would the doctor say? Hmm? What would you call being discontent? What sort of quality is that? It's old, isn't it? It's the impure trait, isn't it? To say anything old, it means it's impure. It, say, for instance, I'm not able to tolerate something. What type of sanskar is that? Ask yourself. It's not a godly sanskar, is it? It's not a divine sanskar either, not one of the deities. So what would you call it? You would call it an impure trait, wouldn't you? What does the doctor say? A couple of doctors in the front line. We have Dr. Roger Cole, Dr. Pratap in the front line. That is looking at Dr. Cole. It is an impure trait, isn't it? We are godly children. The children of God. So, see, what is our son? What are our sanskars? What is our nature? Just like the last kalpa, I have once again become a child of God. I had got lost, I had stumbled, and where did Papa find me from? He's been whispering in my ear, he's been drawing me closer to him, he gave me drishti, and then in my ears, he's been whispering, he's been buzzing the knowledge. Little by little by little, he's made me his. He's got total hold on me so that I remain his. Baba has that um, concern that here I've made these children mine. I have found them from here and there. I've made them mine and I don't want Maya to chase them. So if the child doesn't have value for the work that Baba has done over the soul as the teacher, as the mother, such a person will stay in a state of self-respect. For a soul who doesn't have value, well, doesn't have value for the for their own life, their own Brahmin life. The fact that Baba has made them his, got himself. Not that thought that I have renounced or have had to renounce, but no, through renunciation I have fortune, immense fortune. Nobody is following me, nor do I have a need for anyone simply that I am a greatly fortunate soul. So the more I free myself, you know what it is, it's dependency that doesn't allow you to stay in a state of self-respect, any form of dependency, dependent on anything, person or luxuries or things of the elements, we become dependent on these temporary Maya things. But we have to conquer Maya. We have to become Mahavirs with understanding. Become Mahavirs and conquer Maya. Understand that this is Maya. This is what I have to be victorious over. And in a second we understand that this is Maya. We recognize it because Baba's sound is so powerfully ringing in my ears that no other sound can enter. So this is why I always say it's very good that we have two ears to hear with one ear and remove whatever it is that's not necessary for us to know through the other ear. So it's up to me. It's, 
if there's something that I'm not interested in, then somehow I just, my ears become blocked. I don't hear it. But if it's something we want to hear, then even the deaf person will be able to hear it. Okay, f for instance, we've heard a little bit of something and whatever it is, we're not interested, so we remove it from the other ear. But with Baba's versions, we want to listen with both ears. We want it to penetrate our mind. We want our brain to catch it really well. I don't want my brain to be dull in this respect. And I want that to filter into my heart. Why? Call it bhakti, the feelings of bhakti. I think on the path of bhakti, I don't believe I would have asked God for anything because I just didn't have that habit. But what I did want was a very, very good intellect. And after coming into Gyan to this day, I said, Baba, Baba, you are the one who gives a divine intellect. You are the bestower of a divine intellect. And so we have two Babas. So I'm not going to ask for it just from one Baba. I want it from both Babas. I want to have a really good intellect so that I can have yoga with you, so that I can understand what you are teaching me and practically carry it out. Practically do it. So my own old sanskars or nature or the influence of others should not prevail over me. The intellect should be so clean. So clean that the intellect immediately grasps the good things that I'm listening to. So these are things of self-respect that I'm sharing with you. To let the intellect be so clean. And here Baba gives us the example of um, storing the milk of a lioness in a golden vessel. The milk of anyone else can be stored in an ordinary vessel, but the milk of a lioness would be stored in a golden vessel. So what Baba transforms us from and into, he gives us love, of course, but he gives us so much power, so many powers. So not only that the intellect needs to be clean and true, but Sato Pradhan, so that I can become pure gold. So the more I inculcate Baba's qualities, the more I'm able to imbibe his power. Anything that's like dirt, Baba says, it's like taking in stale food, taking in impure food. And Baba says, eat fresh fruits, eat fresh food. And not even yesterday's Murli, Baba says, every day Baba wants to give us a fresh Murli, fresh food. Don't miss a single Murli. If we miss the Murli even one day, then it's as if weakness enters. And that's what would happen to me, I know. And if I don't listen to one Murli with attention, then I don't know, it's like, there's this feeling, I don't know what's happening with me. So to have that much importance for the Murli, the Murli is so important to me. The more you go deep into the Murli, it's like Baba teaches us to dive into the ocean. And you find jewels as you dive deep into the ocean and knowledge tastes very sweet, like nectar. And it's as if I have um, valuable jewels. The deeper I go, the more value I feel I have for these jewels of knowledge. And then my face reflects that I have something valuable inside of me. It's something that I treasure. It's something that I've received from Baba. And then 
every relationship with Baba, the mother, the father, the teacher, my friend, such a friend who's always with me, my father, my Baba, the highest on high, the Supreme Father and the World Father, Shiv Baba and Brahma Baba, the Supreme Father and the Father of the World, both are saying, okay, if you think that they are the mother and father, that's also fine, but he says to us, children, you are my companions in the task of establishment of the world. You are the arms of Brahma. Shiv Baba says, the father is the benefactor. You children have to be world benefactors. I am the benefactor. You, my child, are world benefactor. And for Brahma Baba, he says, you are his arms. So sit on his head and let the Ganges flow from the forehead. If you look at Brahma Baba's forehead, you yourself will become like him. You will become the flowing Ganges. Brahma Baba makes us um, pure, but he says to us, become the flowing Ganges that is so pure. Don't just um, repeat knowledge through your mouth, but immerse yourself in the knowledge so you become the knowledge so that you are the flowing Ganges as is my father become like the father the teacher the friend as we experience that relationship with him we become like him within each relationship we become equal to him and whilst learning, constantly learning, um, the attention is on the study. And then, as is my father, I become like him. Baba explains the knowledge, and then he says, it's the drama. He explains, and then he says, this is the drama that we enacted a cycle ago. And he says, this is each one's part. Brahma Baba. Um, has had to go through so much, face so much defamation and insult. And Shri Baba teaches us so sweetly. He explains so sweetly. And he says, having taken this chariot, this chariot has had to go through so much. But Baba says, he saw, become detached, become immune. You're playing your part with everyone um, through this body, but be detached, be immune, and don't come into the effect of all the fluctuations of things around you. You know, when, you, when it's a wet day, you put on your rainproofs, or you put on something fireproof, so that the conditions of the surroundings don't affect you. You don't come into the effect of what's happening around you. So the more you keep yourself clean, saf, clean internally, the more you will remain safe. And you'll be in that state of self-respect. It's natural. And then for every soul, and especially Brahmin souls, you will feel regard. You will feel love. Because each one has their own speciality. And yesterday, one other very lovely point that came up, Baba said, be complete with all virtues, be master, almighty authorities. We can become complete with all um, virtues, but I cannot have the virtues of everyone else in me. That's not possible. Sorry, I cannot have the specialities of everyone within me because each one has their own unique speciality. They're playing, they're, they're using that unique speciality 
but let me see each one's virtue and avoid seeing anything of defect or negativity and realize that I have my speciality, everyone else has their speciality. Okay, Baba has selected each one and made them his child and reminds each one of their speciality and draws um, sheds light on each one's speciality and when we see each other in a detached way as an observer then um, we don't remember that we had this speciality before nobody else around us remembers that they had that speciality before but Baba somehow um, kind of um, draws out that speciality he sees that potential and he um, helps that potential grow and he somehow brings out that speciality and each one has their own part to play but within that if there is jealousy if I'm not seeing the speciality of the soul then if I go into the thoughts of jealousy or thinking in the wrong way, then we come down from our own self-respect. So, in this we have to just be the detached observer. Stay in your self-respect. Be detached. Detached is... Detached in the sense not to have attachment. But then to be detached in the sense that know that each one's part is their own and then whatever it is I have to do let me do that in the best possible way but let me be a detached observer of each one's part because then my part will be a hero part and my part will become even more special and I'll be able to see the part of others in a very special way. My vision of seeing each one's part will become very special. Whether it's somebody rolling chapatis, or someone who's doing lectures, or somebody who's um, washing pots, or whether someone's a doctor, or whether someone's a nurse, no matter who it is, see them from up above. Just as Baba gives light and might from up above, and then he gives blessings from up above, and he's giving it generously to everyone. And as Baba said today, he uplifts the sages and saints also. And of course, Baba uplifts the sinners too. Just as he does that from up above, from that perspective of being up there, that is what I have to do, be up above. So on the one hand, he reminds us that I'm a child of God, that I am the same soul from, the, from last Kalpa, that home is the home of peace, that is the home of all souls, and then until we go home, let us all play our part in a very good way so that we can claim an elevated status in the future. And the drill that Baba conducted, everybody liked very much. Farishta, so Devta. Farishta, the angel who's becoming the deity. So deity, will, that stage will come later, but the angelic stage we can experience here and now what does an angel do? Stays in a state of self-respect and the feeling is that I'm not doing anything. The face of an angel. Bring that in front of you. You think of the vision of an angel. What is the drishti of an angel like? An angel doesn't speak, has eyes and ears, but the eyes are most powerful because through the eyes, there is that pure vibration, that drishti, that gives happiness. And seeing an angel brings that happiness. And the feeling that the angel is my protector. Angels are loved by everyone. So at least let my stage be such that I'm loved by everyone. Everyone feels that I have that nature of protecting and 
benevolent so to feel love means to be able to give respect but in that state actually to say to give respect it seems ordinary but whatever is necessary is what you will feel and that is what you will give so swaman self-respect and sanman to give respect to others so these are new treasures from baba in this new season and these treasures are what are going to make us full of treasures the time stay in that state so nothing should come into my subconscious mind or in my thoughts or on my face yes not in the subconscious mind not in my conscious state not on my face so to have that um, carefulness take care of yourself and check yourself in this way there shouldn't be anything on my face or in my vibrations everyone should feel good vibrations from us andar ki sachai safai internal honesty and cleanliness first internal honesty and then cleanliness and automatically we will become deities but first papa says angels and then deities so a deity um and an angel protector whatever i have received i want everyone else to share in that i want everyone else to receive that so yes um the point was that the deities are the children of lakshmi and narayan but angels we are the direct children of god the, the mouth born children of brahma so god gives through the mouth of brahma and he says children let your hands be like this that is of protecting others of um, angels don't give in the way lakshmi is shown with open hands in front but angels are as if they are up above and they are protecting from up above and they're giving from up above and it's not that you have to ask for anything and then they give something but no the angel balances with both hands and gives through both hands both wings whether it's the western world the eastern world doesn't have any difference in that feeling of north or south or anywhere else but here it is our chance in madupan for double foreigners um, that these extended some people stay or has said yes by all means um, concentrate on these aspects and this has been that is experience that when there's been attention on the self then it becomes a habit wherever you are to pay attention on yourself yes of course we give attention to others as necessary but it shouldn't be that we don't have attention on ourselves it's not possible for one who has that role of giving attention to others to not have attention on their selves on themselves if the heart isn't working the head isn't working then what would be the point of having a long life yaad aisi ho remembrance should be such mind body that both mind and body are of use they should have power in them sarv shakti man baap ki the power of the almighty Aisi authority father you are master man ke rahe such power Bajab that we Samadhi. remain the Ichi masters the Balak. child that becomes the master these are the words Balak of sweet mama the child becoming the master so what does a child do sees what the father is doing and observing the father at every step the mouth the face become like the father's we repeat the things the father says mm.
बाबा ने इतना सहज योगी सरल योगी बनने के लिए given us many methods to make the intellect so easy so good that is going to go via Ahmedabad to I think Patna and then Delhi and then London in 18th Daddy that is going to go to London for eight days and then she want that Kumarka wants her back here for the 18th um, for something here and that he wants to see how you celebrate Diwali here, Diwali of being in self-respect, giving respect to others, because whatever happens in Madhuban, the vibrations of that spread around the whole world, that wave goes around all of the centers. So Daddy is going to celebrate Diwali. Um, in Patna, there's a mega program Mega programs happening in all four directions, and after that, there'll be a big program in Pune, big program in Pune, then in Jaipur, and then when Daddy returns, of course, to Madhuban. But the two weeks in between of Diwali to celebrate, not superficially, but celebrate with great happiness, so that that is lasting happiness very well celebrate very well so it's happiness from your toes up to the head some very good souls who attract um, knowledge and daddy sometimes sees such souls and thinks gosh this soul is a thirsty soul and she sees them taking drishti in baba's remembrance and the soul feeling great happiness and asking, where did you um, find all of this from? And Daddy said, shall I share a secret with you? So in Sakar days, when Baba used to give Drishti, and Baba would just be sitting giving Drishti, he would be seeing each one, giving Drishti to each one. And then Baba will see, has this one died? Has this one become bodiless? And seeing that the soul is becoming bodiless is like a magnet drawing you drawing the soul so when avyat Bhaptada gives drishti and the drishti is received through the eyes and goes through the whole body and it's that drishti that is enabling dadi to carry on it's that drishti that spreads through the whole body it's not just the eyes and the brain but through the whole body that drishti spreads and this is why it is said that it is um, an amazing wonderful star that sparkles in the center of the forehead and then when you have experienced that powerful drishti then others will feel that from you so that he wants us to rehearse this so we become perfect in this time of Diwali this practice of taking power from Baba so that there's that feeling I am in Baba's vision Baba is in my vision that's what will remain at the end and when you take Drishti from Baba then you sort of become merged so that you're merged in love you disappear yourself it's like you and Baba soul to soul and when the needle is absolutely clean the magnet can draw the needle can attract the needle so one time we'd had the spiritual conversation on this subject that if there's rust on the needle then first of all we have to do the work of removing that rust you know a needle that has to be used to give an injection has to be so clean it can't be used if it's faulty in any way or has rust just as a needle that's used in sewing has to be absolutely smooth and clean, can't be rusty. I should be such a clean needle that Baba, the magnet, can pull me towards him. This is the work I have to do. And you see how she was clicking her fingers? So that's how quickly she wants us to do that work. 
So whilst we're here in Madhuban, do that work, start that work, so that what Baba wants is what I want. And then the feeling, Baba, I don't want anything else. I only want to do what you want me to do. And there's no other thought. No other thought can enter. If any other thought comes, then there has to be some work of forgetting it, but there is no other thought. So this is the result that Daddy wants to see here, but she'll pick up that vibration from far away. But that result should be first class, so that next time Baba comes, Baba should see the good work that we've done, and Baba would then feel happy with us. So, that he wants the Gyansar of our residence to take Toli first. So,